Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Monster69. Hope you're well. Welcome to a slightly different video today. This is me having a look at Star Atlas. For those that don't know me, I'm a Star Citizen player. Um, I, I stream Star Citizen three days a week. I, I'm heavily involved in, in, in the project and, and love it dearly. I make Star Citizen videos. So Star Atlas being a similar game in, in scope, I believe, uh, has also caught my attention. Uh, I'm not coming... I'm not coming from the crypto NFT angle, which is what Star Atlas is. It is a NFT based game. I'm purely coming from, I like space games. Uh, so, I mean, not to waste anyone's time, this game is in very early development. So it's, you know, extremely early alpha, if you like. They're just kind of starting to build it out in the last year. So I'm not going to be very harsh either way. It's more about just what's kind of, uh, what's happened in the last year, what, what, what we can kind of get our hands on, have a look at it. And like I said, the, there's this kind of dynamic of some Star Citizen uh, community members hating on Star Atlas, even at this very, very early initial stages. And I've watched some Star Atlas content creators uh, really get their facts wrong about Star Citizen. So I'm, I'm bringing my own approach, which uh, I hope is balanced and, and non-biased. I actually want Star Atlas to to uh to do well i think the more space games there are out there for everyone the better it is for the consumer um so let's dive in and have a look at star atlas ladies and gents here we are this is the main menu i'm going to quickly just get rid of my camera so you can see the menu options so you've got the showroom which is kind of similar to uh, star citizens hangar uh which was the first bit of content they also put out there's also a flight trainer which has got a racing and very rudimentary dog fighting module and the inventory here is really just to customize your avatar but what's sort of interesting to me is are these different classes in star atlas or are they just skins i'm, I'm not sure if star atlas is going to have classes or not I'm, I'm i'm sorry i haven't done the level of research that i probably should have but it's it's interesting nonetheless if it does have classes this is where it starts sort of diverting away from what star citizen does which is essentially define yourself is what's you know the star citizen methodology is your actions dictate who you are in star citizen but i don't know if these these are just um skins that you choose or 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 some sort of class maybe i'm, I'm not too sure yet at this very early stage but at the moment they're just avatars and you get to choose uh one of these characters just to walk around in i've chosen the commander and you can you know customize her uniform um at the moment i can't see my ship in this ship section i don't think this is working yet as it should be you should i think be able to see your your nft ship so i've bought one nft ship guys just to sort of put my foot into this project um the pierce x6 which is a small fighter which we'll look at later on so let's uh skate back out and Every time you come to this menu, you can see your, I think your tokens being analyzed on the blockchain or whatnot. And then the showroom goes from being grayed out to being available. So let's have a look at the showroom. Now I have host, I have hosted and joined uh, another player's session. Uh, it, it worked. It was a bit, it worked well. It worked well enough. Like I said, we're at very initial stages. So I was happy to run around the showroom with a friend. Uh, actually, some randoms joined our session as well. And they spawned their ships. And we got to see a whole bunch of ships. Which is what the showroom's for. And it was it was my first kind of community interaction in, in Star Atlas. So that was pretty cool. We'll just go solo play for now. So I think the showroom... It, it serves 
from my understanding, and I'm sorry for using Star Citizen kind of uh, parallels here because I'm just I'm a Star Citizen player, um, so I apologise to any Star Atlas fans that might not understand. But the showroom to me is a combination of the hangar and also Port Olisar, I believe, in the fact that okay. I don't think that's meant to happen. Oh, right. We just... And uh, just just to be clear, guys, I've got a pretty decent uh, PC. So I've got a 3090. I've got the 64 gig of RAM. I've got a 5970X AMD CPU. And I've got just 9 terabytes of, um, of uh, M.2. So the game does sit on an M.2. I mean, it is beautiful. Uh, it's the Unreal Engine 5. It's stunning. Um, and this is probably one advantage that the Star Atlas dev team has over um, Star Citizen is that they are able to use the use a next generation um, engine. And it, it's, 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 it's quite glorious, actually. It's, it's very stunning. Like the lighting, the color... Um, and even the textures at this kind of rudimentary stage is is quite stunning. So that's very good. And we're going to run to the showroom. So this has actually saved my status, if you like, from my previous run around in the showroom. I think I was in a ship flying around, which is why um, it dropped me where it did. And yeah, my ship's... Or that's actually... I don't own that ship. That's a ship that you get for free i'm just going to go first person mode so my big interest with this game is is it going to go down the simulation path is it going to go down the arcade path right or is it going to go somewhere nicely in between uh that'll be interesting to see do they want to go niche like full simulation do they want to cater to as much of the market that they can and kind of have a bit of an arcadey feel to it um you know, Star Citizen likes to think it's a simulator. A lot of it is arcadey as well. Um, but it'll be interesting to see which direction Star Atlas goes. So this is the showroom where you can spawn your ships. You can also go upstairs and there are some ship manufacturers that have got some stuff on display. And this is my ship that I own. This is the actual NFT of the Pierce X6 Light Fighter. It's a sleek, I think it's a single seat, four hard point, um, small ship, I believe. And it's chugging at the moment. I'm sure there's, you know, there's... I'm going to give them a lot of time to optimize, guys. So I'm not going to be too critical on the performance at the moment. What what my uh, sort of mode is to observe this project and see how it progresses. Is it progressing relatively fast? Is it progressing relatively slowly? Um, they have kind of less of an excuse that Star Citizen has because why they've got a, gener an, a generational leap in the engine that's available to them. So I'm, I'm, I'm being very lenient with my approach to this project, but probably slightly less lenient than, uh, than I am with Star Citizen because A, of the engine, and B, because literally they can learn a lot from what Star Citizen's already done any mistakes that they've made any you know if they copy star citizen i'm i'm okay with that that's that's some sometimes that's what you need to do you know things sometimes aren't created in a vacuum uh there there's layers of of you know civilization before you that you draw upon to create your own thing so i i don't hate on them i'm not like oh my god their ship looks like star citizen their interfaces look like star citizen they're, they're, i think that's a, a smart thing to do to rapidly progress the the, the the project you know if something works in star citizen use it absolutely uh, and i'm not in any way poo-pooing that whatsoever um <clears throat> so anyway 
Here's the PSX6. I'm I'm very happy with it. I, th I think it's a stunning ship. Uh, yeah, as you can see, there's, there's I mean, this is a very slick looking ship. It doesn't have as much engineering porn as like, you know, like a Drake would or something like that. But it's very slick. But you can see uh, the lighting effects and the sheen. Um, there's you know a, a very good level of detail. I think when I when I actually look at it, the frames drop. You can open the hangar doors from here. Now, I can't fly this ship at the moment. It's not flyable. It's... I think it's great. I think the interior hasn't been done. Uh, it's just the exterior. And yeah, every time I, I tend to look at it, my system tends to get, get stuck, which is horrible. They definitely need to optimize that, because that ain't no fun. I'm sort of, um, yeah, it's not a big thing, but I'm semi-impressed that uh, it saved the two ships that I spawned before. So if we go upstairs, so this is where you can spawn your ships, you can hang out with other players. It really is a showroom that you can show off your ships. And it's, I think, part of the universe that Star Atlas is building. Like this showroom is going to stay and they're going to start building the world around it, which is why I said it was like the hangar in Star Citizen, but it's also like Port Olisar in that it's actually the first bit of real estate in the actual universe, uh, which is a really cool concept if this stays and they maintain it and update it with, you know, the latest kind of ships and news that's hitting Star Atlas. Like players can actually physically travel here and experience the showroom and digest the latest information that the developer wants to pass on to them it's a great way of uh of communication i feel between the dev and the players so, so here you have pierce which is one of the ship manufacturers which has you know the white boxes or gray box models of some of the ships that are available so as you can see this is like the star citizen expo but it's it, it potentially could be a permanent part of the universe that they're building and on the other side you've got uh opal and in that corner you've got uh Kiliko, i think and here you got fimble as well now these statues represent the three different factions that you'll be playing in Star Atlas. You've got Mud, which are the human uh, faction. Then you've got an alien faction. Then you've got an android faction, which is the guys at the back. And to be honest, I chose to be part of the human faction just to be safe. But man, the androids look awesome. Uh, so I would love to maybe see if I can switch factions there. Let's, there is a ship that you can fly, so let's have a flight. So this is a Opal liner or something. This is the ship that's actually, sorry, it's a Floyd. Uh, this is the ship that's in the, um, in the trailer. This is the ship that you see that's in the trailer. It's it's kind of got some cutlass vibes a little bit and freelancer vibes a little bit um as as allegedly there are some star citizen artists that have moved over to star atlas so we'll see a lot of a lot of the same design principles here you can see a lot of detail on the engine intricate detail on the uh you know landing gear and and the tiles very space shuttle like tiles on the underbelly of the fuselage so yeah now this you can kind of fly oh you can fly which is pretty cool Now, I'm not very happy with the interior. I think it's a bit soulless, uh, to be honest. I'm, and look, this is their first ship. This is their first interior, so I'm not gonna be too harsh. There's a lot of engineering porn, a lot of detail for the sake of 
detail, but it doesn't have character. Um, so I don't get a sense of the shit manufacturer. It's actually a little bit like a real good kind of No Man's Sky uh, interior, to be honest. And same with this section of the ship. I found it to be a little bit of a waste of space, having all this kind of unused space in the central section of the ship. Uh, there's four doors, two doors on either side. There's the cockpit up ahead, and there's just a small table in the in, in on the right hand side there that people can lounge around in. I think maybe they'll add more stuff. I mean, this is a work in progress, guys. So maybe I'm being a little bit harsh, but it's just my current. It's my feedback at the moment is that it's a little bit generic looking. There's there's too many lines and like detail on the on the ground for the sake of just having detail. Um, and well there is a cool little kitchen there um but it, it doesn't really exude a design language to me um i don't think they've they some themselves have kind of you know here's the bedroom it, it, it kind of makes sense it kind of doesn't make sense uh, there's a desk in the corner. Can someone actually use that desk? I mean, you can. Um, it, it looks very cramped, obviously. I mean, it is a spaceship, but... Um, yeah, so look. It, it's okay. There's a nice window. I like ships with, with windows, so you can ponder out into space. But again, no, you know... I mean, you can view... I suppose that's actually... No, I'll take that back. That sitting area can actually access that that window and, and look but i think it's a waste of space i think the uh, design language is a bit it's busy for the sake of being busy but it doesn't it doesn't give me a, a sense of a character of, of the ship um so anyway they'll continue to add on to that i'm sure let's go into the bridge so here we go we can see it's a three-seater lots of screens detail here i don't know if the animation is if they're going to that nth degree like star citizen where you see the avatar like climbing to a seat um at the moment you kind of just teleport into the seat like so and here we go first flight in star atlas And you can see it's in VTOL mode. You've got your shield and your uh, hull bars. On the right-hand side, you've got a temperature gauge. Left-hand side, you've got your speed. And you've got a speed limiter. And uh, as you throttle forward, the ship automatically goes from VTOL mode into flight mode, which is really cool, I found. And if, if I stop, it'll automatically go into VTOL mode, which is pretty cool, actually. I like that. I like that. Uh, you don't have much of a flying area at the moment. You kind of hit a imaginary wall, so we can just do some circles around here. But what's important to me, like I said, I'm, I'm more into the simulation side of things. I want to be immersed, and thankfully this has a view from the cockpit. So if you press C, now you can feel the weight of the ship. It's got a little bit of drift, but not much at the moment. I would say the flight models, you know, T minus one, not even T zero. I think this is just maybe a default flight model, and they'll hopefully continue to add some depth, depth to the flight model, some weight, drift, you know, more uh, realistic physics, um, things like that. So. But, so, you know, for a very, very initial sort of stage, um, you know, I can definitely work with this at the moment. I'd want it to continue to improve. You kind of, you know, it's, it's all sorts of different views as well, which is nice. And you can pan around. Um, but one thing I kind of noticed that Star Citizen sort of addresses is the little maneuvering thrusters, right? They kind of, I know the physics in Star Citizen is nowhere near perfect, but the maneuvering thrusters give you a little bit of illusion of realism in the sense that 
if you know when you come to stationary like this in atmosphere you kind of see some thrusters working uh, apart from these four like theoretically right now this should be moving forward right because I'm, I'm pitched my nose is pitched down and the uh, the uh, angle of thrust is is sort of almost horizontal so I should be like moving forward um, in Star Citizen it, there's all maneuvering thrusters around the ship which at least give you the illusion as to why you're now stationary right um, but this this ship doesn't have any maneuvering thrusters apart from the main thrusters uh, we're, look, again it's fine you know if they don't want to go the full simulation mode and they want to keep it a little bit arcadey uh, I'm okay with that as well they, they need they need you know the largest market that they, they can get to, to play the game to buy the NFTs and all that sort of stuff so uh, it's just a slight observation I made but anyway they might add maneuvering thrusters uh, I don't know and excuse me if I get any of this stuff wrong it's just very initial observations and uh, yeah so this is the big daddy and tier zero flying the ground uh, it doesn't really connect with the ground really well I don't know if it's like I'm coming down pretty flat and pretty slow but I think it just kind of bounces but anyway you get out of the seat so that's it guys that's currently what's in the showroom you can get in there you can see your ships uh some of them might be white box some might be gray box you can invite a friend in and you can kind of run around and just have a gawk at, at your ships at the moment so we've got the flight trainer and you've got a race mode which they've added actually there is a race mode in the showroom too um <clears throat> with gates that you can fly through. So here's the Pierce X4, I believe, which is like a very nice looking bike. And uh, you can buy one of these very cheaply to get into the project. I think like five or 10 bucks, which is not bad. As usual, I always go uh, sim mode. <laughs> So we've got two flight modes. We've got hover mode and we've got flight, flight mode. mode and you got your power triangle over there. Like any other space game, you got a nice big compass. It's a nice kind of simple HUD at the moment. We'll, we'll have to wait and see where they go with it, obviously. Uh, but yeah, there's this race mode where you can jump in and start racing. I'm going to hit a few rocks. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, you know, again, the background's stunning. The graphics are beautiful. It's very atmospheric, very immersive.
So there you go, there's the racing module. You know, again, very rudimentary. The flight model is very rudimentary at the moment, uh, but at least it's a starting point. And that's what's going to be the theme of this video, really. This is just the starting point. And it's wait and see. Uh, you can hate on the project if you want, or you can have an open mind and, um, you know, maybe they'll they'll be able to continue to progress and add things and, and make it a game that you might want to play one day. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know myself <laughs> yet. It's it's all wait and see. Um, and then that was the race mode. There is also, lastly, a dogfight mode. And again, the combats. Uh, again, this is very... I, I don't even call this tier zero. I think they would have just kind of put this together quite quickly uh, just for the sake of a demo. Um, and they'll continue to add, obviously, to this because it's very rudimentary. So we're going to flight mode. I'll go into first person view. And we've got our four lasers. I'll increase my speed, and we'll just get a couple kills, hopefully, or die in the process. I don't know if I killed it or it went into a rock, I'm not quite sure, but that's wave one. Oh, there is a radar! Oh my god, there is a radar, guys. I'm so stupid. Of course there is. First person view. Yeah, there is a radar, my bad. My bad. Oh, there's no sense of real weight or momentum. Um, yet, so um, it would be awesome to see what they do with the flight model. Seems like changing. You can see the target status there on the right hand side. I'm just using keyboard and mouse, so I'm not very good, as you can tell. This is a much bigger ship. I think it's a Pierce F4, is it? Yeah, it's a much bigger ship. Probably don't want to be in front of it. And that's uh, that's the little flight module, guys, at the moment. So, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, that's pretty much what's available at the moment on Star Atlas. And, uh, you know, for me, it's wait and see, guys. I'm not going to start pooing all over this project because they've just begun. So if I'm going to be uh, patient with, with Star Citizen, I'm going to be patient with Star Atlas and, 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 and keep an even keel, in my opinions. Obviously, they've just started. They've got a long way to go flight model everything performance everything um so i hope you enjoyed the video um you can get involved quite cheaply actually if you just buy one of those small uh bikes um or just keep an eye on it and see and see where this project goes uh i'll, I'll be i am involved in the project so i'll be making a few more videos and just sort of recording my journey through star atlas and my meaningless opinion on it because uh, <laughs> that's what the internet needs some some more opinions guys this is monster 69 and i'll see you guys on the next video bye for now